What is going on guys? My name is Jake and today I'm going to bring you a quick breakdown for how to do a proper burst as an arms warrior in patch 5.4.8. If you do have any constructive criticism, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. If the video helps you at all, please do feel free to toss a like on it. It always helps. Enjoy. Alright guys, I'm going to be showing you two different kinds of burst that you can do. One is the optimal and one is the fun. Right now I'm going to be showing you fun. First thing is to notice that with these talents, only two of them actually matter for the burst. So technically you can ignore your level 15, 30, 45, and 75 talents because the ones we're going to be really focusing on are going to be 60 and 90. Now, the fun burst is going to be a mix of Dragon's Roar and Avatar. Reason being, you don't want to apply Bloodbath with Dragon's Roar due to the fact that you're not really attacking. You're doing a straight AoE damaging attack, not with your weapon. So using Bloodbath in a situation, while it would be nice to follow up your burst, it's not optimal. It's not the best, but I will say Dragonor Avatar does create a nice big number. It's fun to hit that big number, and it's just interesting to watch. So let's go over the burst of how to do with Dragon's Roar and Avatar, and then after that, I'll show you guys how to do the best burst, which is going to be Bloodbath Bladestorm. Let's get started. Alright, now to set your burst up. First thing you're going to need is your procs, so whatever trinkets you were using, get them procced up first. While it might take a little bit and you might not be the top of the DPS charts, you'll be fine. I'm sure you can get both your trinkets procced in a time of a bloodlust being up, because you get plenty of time to do it, and getting your two trinket procced is maximum damage, and chances are, depending if you are a melee or a caster, you'll get your jade spirit or dancing steel going up as well to really increase your damage. But for warriors, we're looking to get our two trinkets. Hopefully a Dancing Steel and an Enrage. If we can get all of those in, that is going to be the most damage possible. So how we start. First thing is first, you're going to be needing your Flask and Food. I mean, this is like, we're going for a kill here, right? We're taking on a boss. We want to be doing maximum damage. So you're going to have your 1,000 Strength Increased Flask and your 300 Food. You will be pre-potting. So that means you're going to have two pots throughout the fight. First one's going to be here. is going to increase your Strength by 4,000 for 25 seconds. Now, the reason I want to really make this video is because I see people messing up on this. They will go in, pop their cooldowns, and that's it, all right? That's not proper. Do not immediately charge in. We're going to make sure we can do the most damage, and the most damage is not an instant charge. But in fact, we're going to be leading off with Shattering Throw. You might be asking why. Shattering Throw, when you hit someone with it, technically in PvP sense, is to break an ice block or to break a paladin's bubble, right? For PvE, it's going to be decreasing the target's armor by 20% for 10 seconds. Now it's time to get your absolute serious DPS on. This is going to be the highest damage you'll be able to do with this combination. As before, we are skipping the first three tiers because they don't matter at all for this burst, as well as the in-between, our 60 and 90. What matters is we're going to be using Bladestorm, Bloodbath. Now this combination works so well is because all the damage you're going to be doing when bursting with Bladestorm will be applied into a Bleed Tick with Bloodbath. So you're not only going to be doing upfront burst, but as well as damage over time with an extremely powerful dot. Cannot go wrong with this one. This is the best one. I just think that Dragon's Roar is a little more fun because as soon as you're done, you're into slamming and you can actually try to even repeat the, the damage you've got with your Dragon's Roar. But Bladestorm does give continuous damage over time, which cannot be a bad thing at all, right? Continuous damage, spinning around, doing all that. It's amazing. Let's take a look.
All right, guys, and that's going to do it. It's more than obvious that the Bloodstorm is far more powerful than the Dragon's Roar Avatar. There's no two ways about it. The initial damage does outdo it, as does the dot damage that follows afterwards, and just your overall power of landing slams and mortal strikes that follow. So if you're looking for aesthetics, while you're just maybe grinding out Valor or Justice and be it Dungeons, Scenarios, or LFR, go ahead and enjoy the Avatar with Dragon's Roar. It looks great, it's fun to do. But if you are doing flexes, normals, or heroics, obviously, you should be doing Bloodstorm. Good thing about Bloodstorm, its combination cooldown is only one minute. So as soon as you see Bladestorm or Bloodbath that's come off of cooldown, they're both ready. You can be using them on the minute, every minute, until Recklessness comes back up, which is a three minute cooldown. So you can get two Bloodstorms off before Wreckstorm comes up to be its ultimate wrecking bloodbathy goodness. <laughs> So guys, again, if you enjoyed the video, helped you out at all, please do feel free to leave a like below as well as comment if I should be doing more PvE guides. Just when I started doing PvP guides, I had to start somewhere doing something, and I'm doing the same thing here, just trying to get my feet wet with it. So until the next time, guys, have a good one.